we launched this conference. I, I had this conference uh, because I wanted to launch this book. And the reason I wanted to have a big splash in launching this book is because this is the most important book I've ever written. That's the, me, the guy that wrote it, saying that from my own perspective. This is the most important book I've ever written. This is book number 17. I've already got five in the, in, that I've, we have agreed to write with Harvest House lined up through 2016. But I'm going to tell you, I cannot imagine in my lifetime. I'm not saying it won't happen because who knows. I've, one thing, if there's one thing I've learned is that God surprises you. I can't imagine in my lifetime ever writing a book that I would say, that I will ever say is more important than this book right here. I wrote Grace Walk when I was 39 years old, turn, turning 40 years old. Uh, I, this book's coming out. I'll, as I said, I'll be 60 in, next week, I think, in, in July 7th, whenever that is. I'll be 60. So 20 years have passed. When Grace Walk came out, I didn't have a lot of expectations for it. I didn't have really any expectations. I didn't have a frame of reference for expecting or hoping anything. I was just shocked that somebody wanted to, that actually, a real publisher, you know what I'm saying, that a real publisher wanted to publish anything I'd written. So when the book came out, I didn't have expectations or really hopes for it. I just wrote the book, and I said, well, I'll, we'll see what happens. And uh, the rest is history because of the way God used it. But with this book, Beyond an Angry God, I'll be honest with you. I have a lot of hopes on this book, more than any other book, any book I've ever written. More than any book I've ever written. I have a lot of hopes for this book, and I pray that God will use it. This will be, from my perspective, the new signature book for what I'm doing, even more than Grace Walk. Mm -hmm. Because this is 60-year-old Steve's understanding of a message that I began to understand and wrote about at 40. So this is the progression. This, this, is, the, this is the bud come into a greater bloom. I won't say full bloom because it, gets, it, keep, gets, it keeps getting more and more beautiful the longer we examine it, doesn't it? So it won't reach full bloom now or maybe even in eternity as far as our understanding and our appreciation of the beauty of it. But this is it. This is where my head is today. This is a this is a the truth that I believe God has revealed to me. And not only me, of course, to many of you and to others of us, but I'm saying, as uh, Paul said a minute ago, I've heard Jesus speak. I've heard Jesus speak. And you can't take away something from Jesus told it to him, can you? And I want to share this message the rest of my life. Now, I, and I want you to spread this message too. And I know you are. We've got a great Grace Walk team of seven countries. And some of you are here and some of you are friends of our ministry in the sense that you're already working alongside us. I just saw Juan sign. There's Juan. There you guys are right here. Craig just got back from Romania. And they're passionate about spreading this very message. And I've got friends in other ministries who are here today. And if we, we, But I'm telling you, we can make a difference. You, me, we can make a difference because Christ is in us. And people are hungry to hear this message. They're hungry to hear it. Uh, I, I know I told you I was going to talk to you about the book and bulk break discount. Now listen, let me just say it this way. BeyondAnAngryGod.com until now has been the registration site for this conference. But that site will remain and will become the, the, the site for this book. And so keep going back to beyondanangrygod.com. I don't have any final answers to give you on cost of books yet because I didn't, I wasn't able to work that out with my publisher and resolve and come to a definitive answer about cost. Uh, and so I can't tell you cost because I don't know what it's going to cost. But come to beyondanangrygod.com. I gave you a book today. Uh, you should have registered online already. If you didn't, be sure that you somehow get your email. In fact, let's do it this way. Caleb, Caleb's not only been a big help in this conference, and by the way, goodness, I don't want to pass you by on what you contributed to this conference this weekend. Caleb, this is... You are the man. And this is why I, want, I, I knew I wanted you to come and, and do this from the get-go because... Our heart, yours, mine, Baxter, Paul, our heartbeat is just together on this. And it's such an honor for me to have you here. And thank you for what you contributed to the weekend. Having said that, he also has contributed in an ongoing way through the Beyond an Angry God website. And if I say, Caleb, can we get this on the site? Kabang, he's got it on there. Maybe Caleb, while I'm thinking about it, because I'm getting old and will forget, uh, 
maybe we can put something on the Beyond an Angry God website so people can sign up with their email and then when I know the cost of the books and all that, we'll put you on an email mailing list and we'll keep you updated. And I'll tell you what, Baxter and Paul and I kind of, we, we talked about, well, if we do this again, if this should happen next year, if we do this another time, and so we haven't said, yeah, let's do it, let's find a place, let's do it. We haven't said it, but I think we're all very open to this possibility again. Is that a trick question? What's that? <laughs> Is that a trick question? Is that a what? Trick, trick question. question. Trick question? <laughs> I, I take it however you want to. Do. <laughs> I think it's a fishing lure, Baxter. <laughs> <laughs> You, you're walking away. You're walking away from here with all kind of vices. I happen to know people have given you that make the Southern Baptist cringe even to think about it. So you've been blessed, my brother. You've been blessed. Yeah. And that's right. I'd love nothing more than the Lord to work that out. Hey, would you like to see that? I'm not asking that so you. Oh, this was good. Y'all did good. I'm not asking that. I'm honestly asking it because. You know, these things don't just fall together, right? They don't just fall together. But we've talked about it. I wonder if we did this again and maybe if people enjoyed it this time, but other, they may invite others and others may come. So watch that beyondanangrygod.com website. And, and uh, I've got a sense this won't be the last time we do, we do all, we all get together like this. I just have a sense of that. And so watch the site and uh, we'll, we'll see what, what's going on in the future. This is the message. How much time have I got? Just you, your conference. <laughs> <laughs> 10, 15 minutes. 10, 15 minutes. 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> well, I backed away from that. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. 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 Thank the message we're telling people is not the message that many of us grew up with. Yeah. It's, it's not that, that God in that chair that was over there. Hey, he's gone. It's gone. <laughs> he's gone. He's been swallowed up in this circle over here. Let's go. The lie has disappeared. It's been engulfed by the truth. That God that a lot of us grew up believing in he never existed and we heard it one way all of our lives and we, because we lived in a bubble whether it was your Baptist bubble or your Pentecostal bubble or your charismatic bubble or your Presbyterian bubble or whether it was this just tiny thing called the Western world bubble we lived in this bubble and it was the way we had heard it all of our lives and because we had always heard it that way we believed it we didn't know there was another way to see God this mythological God this angry God this this God that never existed, we thought that was the true living God, and He never was. He never existed. He only existed right up here in our darkened minds and in the confused thoughts that we used to construct this deity that was not real. And so what we've learned and what we celebrate is that the God who is real is a relational God. He's a God who's all about giving and including and pouring out in, pre in preference and in deferential honor to the other. He's the God who's reached out and embraced not just you and me, but the world. He's the God of all of us. He's the God who included us from before we even were alive to know we were included before there was anything created. We were already included. He's the God that we go out now and tell people about, not telling them the message we used to tell that says, if you will let Him, here's what He will do for you. We're not saying if you will believe, God will do this for you. Oh, we want you to believe. We tell them, yeah, of course we want you to believe. You, you must believe to experience this. Nobody's negating the importance of believing the Gospel. But the Gospel is only good news if it's already done. If it's not done yet, it's a sales pitch. We're trying to close the deal. We're out there campaigning for Jesus, trying to get people to cast their vote in hopes that He'll win. But the good news is, He has won. He has won. The election's over. And God's elect, Jesus, has encompassed and drawn us all up together in Him. And so now we go out there and we tell people, 
here's what has happened. Here's what is done. Here's what is finished. You have been embraced and included in the love of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And if you will just believe this, you'll be transformed by this truth. But it's true whether you believe it or not. We don't go telling anybody what God will give them because God's already given it. He's done it all. Here it is. I go into the kitchen. I want, I know Melanie's been to the grocery store that day, and I want to end my day watching television, lying in the bed beside her, eating my potato chips and dip. <laughs> I've already got my Mountain Dew. Now I just need my potato chips and my French onion dip. I go into the kitchen and there's the onion dip in the refrigerator. I walk over to the cupboard and I open the door to get the potato chips and she's just been to the grocery store. So I know they should be there. So I look in there and the chips aren't there. My mind already is eating the chips, but I open the door and the chips aren't there. <laughs> and so I know how she is. I've been married almost 41 years. I know what she's going to tell me. She's going to tell me the chips are in there. I know it. I've been through this routine with her 10,000 times in 41 years. I know what she's going to say. So I'm going to be very sure of myself. So before I say anything, I look in the cabinet, in the cupboard, on the shelves, and I scan and I look, and there are no chips there. I think to myself, maybe she put them in the cabinet. I go over there and open the cabinet over the uh, stove and around there. No, they're not there either. So I call out to her finally when I realize the chips aren't there. I don't know where she's put them, but I can't find them. And I call out to her. She's already back in the bedroom with the TV on. And I said, Melanie! She said, yes. I said, didn't you buy potato chips today? I see the dip. She said, yes. I said, where are they? And she said, in the cupboard. <laughs> now, I've just looked there, but I've been through this routine enough times to know I better look again. So I go back over there and I open the door and I look again. Top shelf, second shelf, third shelf, on the bottom. We've got shelves over here on the side. I look on the, they're not there. They're not there. And so I say to her, Melanie! She says, yeah, yes. I said, maybe you put them in the cabinet? Because they're not in the cupboard. She says, yes, they are. They're in the cupboard. <laughs> and I'm already thinking, I don't know why she always does this to me. <laughs> I go back over there again. And I look again. <laughs> Melanie, you must have put them somewhere else. They're not there. Yes, they are. It's amazing how a woman can insult you, degrade you, use some swear words, curse you, belittle, all with just, just without saying anything. Yes, they are. So I go back over there and I think, Okay, so I go back over and I open the door and I'm reaching in there and I, maybe they're behind the cereal. doesn't make sense you put them up here. We usually just keep cereal and breakfast up here. So I'm moving the cereal boxes. They're not there. I come, I'm come. moving the loaves of bread. They're not there behind that. They're not behind the hot dog buns. They're not behind these bottles of ketchup and mustard and mayonnaise and all this. I go down there. I finally get to the bottom shelf, and they're not behind the glad bags and the trash bag and the cleaning supplies. And so. Well, I know that I've already heard her final answer. <laughs> and so... I pick up my Mountain Dew and I just walk back into the bedroom. And I lie down on the bed, across the bed, you know, the TV's in there on the mounted on the wall, and I lie back across the bed and I set my Mountain Dew on the table beside me. And she's fooling with her iPad. And then in a minute she glances over at me and she said, You did you decide you want the chips? 
you don't want the chips? And I said, <laughs> there are no chips here. <laughs> I'm saying, if there is a God, don't let there be chips. I'm right and she's wrong often, but I can never prove it. And she won't admit it. So now I have a chance to prove it. And so I follow her into the kitchen, and I swear, I don't know if one of my grandsons were in on this as a prank. I don't know if it's a potato chip demon. I don't know what happened, but she opened that door, reached out, and pulled out that stinking bag of chips. I was looking so hard to find those chips. I wanted them. I was sincere. I looked hard trying to find them. They were right there in front of me. But I could not enjoy them until the paraclete, the one who, that's not a curse word for those who <laughs> It's not like it means bitch or anything like that. <laughs> that's, that's a Bible word. It means the one who comes along the side. It's the, word, it's the name for the Holy Spirit, the one who guides you. So, apparently, the guide came to me. I couldn't find the chips. I couldn't see them, even though they were right in front of me. I couldn't enjoy them until she led me directly to them and picked them up and made me realize here they are. The thing that I thought I didn't have, I do have, but I could never have enjoyed it if she hadn't caused me to see it and to receive it. That, my dear friends, is how we share the gospel. Because I'm going to tell you, Jesus really is all that and a bag of chips. <laughs> but unbelievers can't see it. They can't see the truth of the gospel because they're blind. And what they need is the Holy Spirit to reveal to them and thankfully, the Holy Spirit doesn't need us to do that. I mean, you know, He doesn't need us to do it. We've all heard these stories of Muslim people having Jesus appear to them and all this. He doesn't need us. But thankfully, the Holy Spirit loves us enough. And it's back to this others-centered God, this participatory relationship that we have. He's going to do what He's going to do. But because He loves them, He wants to show them where the chips are. But because He loves us, He wants to allow us to participate in this. And we get to be the one to say, follow me. Look, here's where the chips are. Look, here's where, here's where it is. Now you can enjoy what you've been looking for. It already belonged to you. Or should I say, He already belonged to you. Life already belonged to you. Righteousness, holiness, forgiveness, acceptance, inclusion. All of these things inherited in the cross. We're able to say, it already belonged to you. All along here. Here it is, all wrapped up in a bag called Jesus. Now, enjoy. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. It is a declaration of good news that is already true. And then that declaration does conclude with an invitation by which we simply say to people, now, 
just eat. Just eat and enjoy. We don't have to make anything happen. We don't have to sell anything to share this message with others. Listen to this. We don't have to do anything to enjoy it ourselves. You already know and believe this, so here it is. Here's my final word in my this last session, this last uh, lecture, if you will, before we do the question time. Here it is. You ready? Just lighten up. <laughs> Just lighten up. Don't go back home and let anybody put crap on you about, well, you need to be doing this, and are you doing that? You should be doing that. Just lighten up. You're good with God. You're in a good place because you're in the middle of this peregrine dance, circle dance that we demonstrated yesterday. You're right squarely in the center. You're a participant in that. So just relax, lighten up. And you don't have to worry about all the people around you who are, seem to be discordant notes in the symphony. That's all right. God can take those notes that seem off key and God can use it. God can use it. All we do is we just share with people here what's true of me is true of you. What's the difference in a believer and an unbeliever? It's really simple. The difference in a believer and an unbeliever? Belief. Belief. Oh, but that, that's everything. Don't, don't think that that's minimizing anything. That's everything. But there's the difference. So we go proclaim the pure gospel of Jesus Christ, knowing that as we do, people are going to believe it and they're going to be transformed. You can quit worrying about the world around you. I don't care what's going on. I don't mean I don't care, but it matters not in the eternal scheme of things what's going on in Baghdad today or what's going on over here tomorrow or what's going on over here on Wall Street or what's going on over here. It, it, the bottom line is there is a God who is in control and has written this beautiful love story that includes all of humanity and every one of us has a part. We're a character in his story. And I can promise you, it is a beautiful story. And he's already written a beautiful ending. So we can relax and just embrace people and accept people and love people. We don't have to change them. You don't have to be scared that but if I love them, they might think I think that their behavior is all right. Or they might think I'm endorsing, you know, their viewpoints. Or No, just relax. Just relax. I told you yesterday, and I mean it. it I, I'm telling you the truth. I can't believe how often I put on this God costume where I want to be in control. And it's so uncomfortable to wear it. Just throw it off and quit judging people. If what they believe is stupid, so what? I believe so much stupid stuff through my life. Am I going to throw rocks at them? If what they're doing is wrong, so what? Are we going to go down that path and live in some sort of dualistic world of right and wrong where now we've got to straighten out the wrongs of the world? No, 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 no. Let's just sit down in our Abba's lap and be a participant in this circle and see ourselves and everybody else through his eyes and let his voice speak through us and his hands reach out through us. Not condemning folks. Some of you grew up like I did and there was a day I would have said, man, that's just way out there. But I'm gonna tell you something. If I drop dead tomorrow, I want to go out loving people. Yep. So let's just lighten up and love. Holy Spirit, fill our hearts with the awareness of the opportunity we have to participate in what you're doing. Making Jesus known. Making the love of the Father known. Bringing people into the full awareness revealing Christ in them the way you did to the Apostle Paul. Make us aware that we just get to be a part of that. We get to, we get to come out on this platform, this playground called Planet Earth. And we, need to get, we get to go on the playground and ask people, let's play. Let's all play together, knowing that you are the one in control. May these truths that we have talked and learned together take root in us 
find a permanent place. May they transform us. It's hard to imagine, dear Lord, that in a group this size that there aren't people that are asking, what in the crap is going on with this? This is different from anything I've ever heard or been told or taught. How could this be true? Lord, we know that these kind of paradigm shifts don't happen instantly, quickly, unless you intervene. And we want you to do that. We want you to wash out all the darkness and the lies from our minds and help us, well, like Baxter said, help us to stand in agreement with you and renounce the agreements we've made that contradict you and who you are. Because when we all in this room see you face to face, I have a strong sense the only thing that will matter is how to the extent to which we operated from love. So empower us, enable us to do that. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.